right now I'd like to introduce our next uh, conversation, which we know will be a, a very good one, as they all have been. This panel is, is entitled The Gender Impact, Women, Women Making Development Sustainable. It's featuring Michelle Bachelet, the Executive Director of UN Women, Gunilla Carlsen, the Minister for International Development Cooperation of Sweden, and Rada Mutai, the Executive Director of the Global Alliance for Clean Cookstoves, to be interviewed by Elda Müller. Please welcome our panel. Good afternoon to all of you. I must say I'm honored to be in the company of these ladies. Uh, they, they know you are powerful, you are inspiring, and you dedicate your vision, your knowledge, experience, and wisdom as well for the benefit of many women around the world. So welcome, and thank you for your brilliant job. <laughs> And I would like also to, well, I'm honored too because of the presence of uh, Queen Sylvia, Brazilian as me. Thank you. And also, King Carl, thank you very much for your presence. This brings more importance to our panel, <laughs> the women's panel. Well, we're going to start with Miss Bachelet. There are Many accomplished women today, thanks God, but few in key positions. At the same time, we face different situations around the world. Women suffering, facing violence, uh, earning less money than men when they work, when they have a job, <laughs> and most of times with no voice. How far do you think we are from a better balance between, between men and women? And how the social media can accelerate this process? Well, thank you, Elta. Um, I just cannot answer you an exact time uh, framework because uh, it has been 20 years ago in the Earth Summit it was mentioned that women were vital piece of sustainable development and after 20 years, we see there has been slow progress. But having said that, for example, in the region, Latin America, we are the region with more head of state of head of women, female, five, and that means that things are moving. I believe that there's a lot of obstacles and we need to identify, and you and women with our partners, government, civil society, parliamentarians, are working to identify which are the obstacles that, women, that prevent women to for being in decision-making position in politics, in the economy. And we're working on identifying which are the solutions to that. So I think we're progressing. We believe that through good electoral laws and through some special measures, uh, uh, special transitional measures such as quotas or such as the one who exists in Ecuador or Tunis, Tunisia, that is like a paritarian law with um, alternate, uh, alternate names on the list of candidates, you can improve uh, the women present in parliament, the women uh, in, in councils, in local councils, and of course, why not, and pre as the president of the republic, like here in Brazil, Dilma Rousseff. So what is needed to do that? Of course, to identify the obstacles, to develop the policies and the laws that can, um, I would say, abolish those, those obstacles, but also we need role models. We need women in uh, high-level positions that are role models for other women, and in that sense, not only is it important to have women as presidents, as parliamentarians, as mayors, etc., but also social media can give the voice to the one who don't have voice, can be a place where women, powerful women, can also uh, connect to other women, give suggestions, recommendations on their own experience, and I would say let the vo women's voices be heard. Great. And about the social media, yeah, to accelerate, do you think? Uh... It, it will accelerate. Uh, but it won't mean that social media means immediately, automatically, that women went in power. And let's see the biggest example for me is Tahir Square. 
I went in March after the Egyptian revolution last year there, and I used to have meetings with the girls of Tahir Square. You know, social media was very important in terms of mobilizing people, organizing people, and so on. But afterwards, women were sort of raised out, if I erased out of parties, political parties. There was an election with all these special measures, and only 2% of all the elected persons were female. So I think social media can be a great opportunity, but you need to do something else also because otherwise it's not guaranteed. Thank you. Ms. Carson, uh, the solutions come from cooperation, no doubt. We heard this all day. How can partnerships leverage the social and economic aspects of the sustainable development agenda? Well, <clears throat> I think we have to really see what is development about. And it's really to bringing people together and really to develop jointly. And that's why I see with the new media, with the internet, we can really tear down barriers and to make new people meet each other. Uh, and this is the huge potential. And that's why we strive very much. I'm a minister for development cooperation to see how can we find the best solutions out there. How can we work with innovations, but also the new and bright ideas, and to make people be able to participate. It's turned things upside down, because now we can have everyone to have a say, but also to be able to participate. And that's why I also think now that I'm so happy to, to, to talk at this forum, because it's really illustrating what we need in order to spur development in the world, and a development that is more fair and more sustainable. Uh, and we are doing that, doing that with partnerships, and that's why we are trying also to see what's the problem out there. And then not only talking about poverty, but to say, yes, that's the problem, but how to solve it? And then to start identifying the problem and then to ask everyone to help to solve it. 